There was one point, you know, it was about four weeks into the pandemic. We didn't know if we were going to be able to continue. But my husband said, if Casa dies, it will be a noble death. And for me, I took solace in that. We've done everything we can, and if this doesn't work out, well, we we'll just have to figure something else out. And I think we've been extremely fortunate being able to continue to, to do our mission, which is having a space for people to live and love the language. Casa de Español is a school for all ages to learn the Spanish language. It's also a place to celebrate the cultures of Latin America and Spain. Prior to the pandemic, they hosted cultural events, summer camps, as well as overseas trips to Spanish-speaking countries. That was the goal from the beginning with Casa de Español. We wanted to have that place for people who wanted to learn Spanish, as well as people who are native Spanish speakers, to really come together and exchange language, as well as cultures. We want to make sure you feel a part of the community and a part of something. Bienvenidos a todos. We're all very welcome here to Casa de Español. Not only do you run the business, but you're one of the teachers, yes, right? Yes, I am one of the teachers. Um, we have at the moment um, six teachers um, from different backgrounds. We have um, one teacher from Cuba, another one from Colombia, a couple of us are from Mexico, and we have a couple other from various parts of Latin America. So that way students get the opportunity to really have an authentic um, worldview of what speaking Spanish is. most surprising thing as a teacher in general is how much you learn from your students. Um, I tell my students every, every session that really I'm the one learning more from them than they are from me. But I think that it's a calling that is really special to be able to share learning, teaching, being a better person. And the fact that I'm able to do that with my culture and be not only an instructor of the culture, but also a representation of the culture, um, that's really special to me. Just briefly, uh, give me a little background on yourself. I was born originally in Mexico. My mom is from Mexico, my dad is from the United States. When I was about eight, nine months old, we're able to come here to the United States. So I grew up basically in Sacramento, California. I was always between countries. So I really had both languages and also both cultures because my father, he's not of Latino descent. So he always spoke to me in English. My mom always spoke to me in Spanish. There was a long moment where I didn't really understand that there were two languages, but as I got older and I started to see how other people spoke, I realized that I had a wider vocabulary. And so that was my first experience with being multilingual and cultural. However, Maria stopped speaking Spanish for many years due to an incident that happened to her at a young age. I was told when I started kindergarten that if I continue to speak Spanish and I continue to be in both cultures, that I would never really learn how to speak English correctly. I was told that um, I would never be a real American if I continued with both. And it was my principal who had told me this. It was a shock for me to hear someone who I respected so much to say that. Once a sixth, seventh grade hit, all of a sudden, I found other people who were of Latino background and they spoke Spanish and I couldn't anymore. How, how much did that play a role in, 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 in what you're doing today? I think that that's something that's been always in the back of my mind of wanting to make sure that other people don't have that, um, that experience, that they're proud of it because number one, it's not true. Right, but the other thing is, is that it's making children and people suppress something that, who they are, it's their identity. And no matter how much you try and suppress it, it's you. 
that kind of began my quest. And that's really what empowered uh, me later on in life to get my degree in Spanish. And I got um, my master's in Latin American studies. So um, it's kind of been this whole process of really finding my own identity within it. Maria went on to become a Spanish teacher in the Bay Area. It was during this time she met her husband, who happened to be from Sacramento as well. The two of them decided to return to their hometown to start a new chapter together. It was then when Maria came up with her business idea. She founded Casa de Español in 2011. You got to be proud of what, you, what you've accomplished. How did you make this dream, this business dream, a reality. It's just true grit. <laughs> you just make it happen somehow. And more than anything, I just learned um, how to work really hard. My dad was an inspiration, and my mom as well has been a, a real inspiration of that. My dad was um, a small business owner, and then my mom, she was a bilingual education teacher. So I ended up now being both. Maria also attributes much of her success to local business associations, such as the Capital Region's Small Business and Development Center, who provided her with a business mentor. I think that this is something that's very key and pivotal, and not only that, something that a lot of minority business owners don't know that exists. It gives you a, a breath, right? That, that extra breath that you need when someone calls you and says, Maria, I think that your, your business could do this, or, or you would be a good candidate, candidate for this, or how are you doing today? Are you surviving? I mean, just it, it's such a wonderful community to be in Sacramento um, and be a small business owner. And, um, and I think that that's been huge and key for us. With the help of these associations, Casa de Español became an integral part of the Sacramento community. What started out as a mere 25 students grew to several hundred students of all ages. And after being in business close to 10 years, 2020 was looking good. And then all of a sudden, like for everybody, right? It was, it was kind of like a blow. We saw like a drastic drop. We actually lost about 28% of our student enrollment for, for adults. Then summer hit and we were still, you know, we still weren't able to be in class or in person. Um, and that was a huge hit for us, the loss of our summer camps. You just, you don't know how far or how long it's gonna last. It was really, really difficult and something difficult to struggle with. How did you guys pivot? We were told to go home, I think, on Wednesday. And then that weekend, we had to set up a whole program online for students to be able to access. We didn't sleep that weekend or the next probably three, four weeks, uh, where it was just constant all weekend trying to figure it out. We got everything up online, and we started the classes. Buenas tardes, profesora. Buenas tardes, como estas donas? So tell me about that challenge of trying to teach a different language remotely now. Teaching remotely has been very interesting. <laughs> I think that the biggest thing that's different is the feel of being within a community that you're doing it together. There's a certain energy that you have and something that I really look for is that that feeling of comfort and that we're all going to get to the next level together. And so creating that and building that community online, that was difficult. Not only are the classes online, but so too are their events. We've done a cooking class. So you could also add in different elements. An art class, book reading. People, whether they're stuck at home or when they're not stuck at home, they're, they're searching for that opportunity to be able to enjoy other cultures. So we're excited to be able to offer that because, again, it's a community. A lot of our students have mentioned how much they miss going to Casa. Knowing that gives you that the strength to go on, that, that what you do and what you offer is something that's very 
personal and important for other people. And it, it say, okay, we're doing it for a reason. Keep going, keep going. I think that no one is an island and having connections to people who really care has gotten me through. And I think that that's kind of what it looked like with a pandemic everyone kind of got together, you know, and, and tried to find those connections. I'm just so proud to be part of a wonderful community that has figured things out as best we can together. That fact motivates me to continue. It makes me feel comfortable and happy and excited for the future and the support that Casa de Español has received from so many people, we're just so appreciative. And the hard times, I just keep thinking and repeating in my head, si se puede, si se puede Sacramento. Uh, just keep going, we're gonna do it together and, and we're just so happy to be a part of you.